Yeah, he wants you to know that since he arrived here, uh, since he arrived in this club, yeah. that he has, um, not only because of your bird racing, but because of your personality and your way of being, bird that he... Bird racing, you know what I always tell people? Yes, Once sir. Once upon a time, not anymore now. <laughs> well, he said he wants me to know he appreciates you, and uh, since he arrived here, he, he considers you among the most respected fans here. Like there may be, but I always tell him. Yeah, he says maybe. Everybody at the club that he's my teacher. He says there may be better pigeon flyers, but I don't think there's a better much person. Better pigeon flyers, much yeah. better. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Europe and some of the fanciers you've met over there. Well, I used to travel Europe quite quite a bit. Okay. Um, starting in uh, oh, 78 maybe. Uh, I used to go to Europe four or five times a, a year. So I've traveled Europe extensively. I did that for up until the 90s. So I was in a lot of German lofts, Belgian lofts, Dutch lofts, but especially Belgian and German lofts. German because that's my native language. I mean, I, you know, Come on, Yandil. <laughs> Come on. Not on the floor. No, no, no. Come on, you, you know. Oh, that's my uh, Cuban Terrier. <laughs> right out I there tell everybody place. what kind of dog I have. I have a Cuban Terrier. <laughs> you didn't know you had Cuban Terriers, huh? <laughs> you, you got to meet the Jensen brothers, did you? Oh, very, very many. Well, Quite you? often. When there were still five alive. Wow. No. The Jensen brothers were special. I mean, special... I'm good friends with Andre Rodolf. Andre Rodolf was their confidant. Their, if I was traveling in Europe with Andre, and we were always on with Andre, we always had to stop at the Jansen Brothers. Whether I, I liked it or not, we stopped at the Jansen Brothers. That was common. Okay. Uh, the biggest thrill at the Jansen Brothers, um, everybody said you would never get a picture with them. Uh, when I went ahead, I took a lot of pictures. I had a slideshow I did for all around the country, AU convention and so forth, like 360 slides I used to do. And the Jansen brothers, not only did I get to take pictures with them once I got to know them a little bit, but one of them was pulling the bushes aside so I could take the pictures. But the biggest thrill was going into the stock loft. Um, nobody got into the stock loft. I ended up in the stock loft and I handled the cock from pair one, the hen from pair one. There were 12 nest boxes, but only nine had pigeons in them. That was a stock loft, a little corner in the building. And so I was in and out of the Jansen loft many, many times. That was just a... Well, and it, what was the most uh, memorable thing you can remember about the loft itself? The Jansen brothers? Yeah. Very simple. Uh, their security system for one of the lofts, uh, one of my later trips, uh, was cold out. We were with Andre Rudolph, and uh, we were picking up a bird for the Canary Islands. So the Jansen brothers go to get the bird. It was in the evening. They go through the kitchen, and get a ladder, walk up, go upstairs to get the bird. It's the only way you can get to, the, to those birds. But their loft, their breeding loft was only... Oh, in a corner, it was a, a brick fence, and, and the house came together in the little corner, maybe, I don't know, 10 by 6 or so. That was the famous breeding loft. But uh, one of my earliest trips, um, the 019 was so famous. Well, I owned, um, the Merckx was, of course, the most famous. The Donker Steer was the father of the Mercs from 63. I owned five children from the Donker Steer later on. So I had those way back. I mean, we're talking, but that's all history, history, history. Well, that's nothing more than that. Uh, the Bloodline Figo, is there any comments you have on that Bloodline? Bloodline Figo is, um, yes, I still have it, very strong. Okay, any remarks you can make on that Bloodline as far as the bird themselves? Well, or? the Figo came from Reynard. Okay. You will never see pigeons from Reynard advertised anywhere. Uh, the Figo was the only pigeon that was the impact pigeon. Now, I read a lot of German magazines. You will still get references to the Figo, oh, maybe once a month. 
but it's always the Fiegel. It's never uh, the brothers of the Fiegel, it's never the sisters of the Fiegel. It always goes to the Fiegel. I was lucky enough uh, in 02, I bought two direct children from the Fiegel. And then I bought, I had seven direct from the Fiegel. And those were golden pigeons, by far, by far. I bought an eighth one in this country that somebody had spent a lot of money for. He was beautiful, he was the most beautiful of all of them. But uh, two years later I had to get rid of him and anything else in the loft was related to that pigeon. But the seven that I bought, every one bred AU champions except the one hen and she had multiple, multiple winners. Wow. It was that strong. Uh, now, I never bred Figos or Reynard pigeons. I only had them from the one cock. I always crossed them onto um, a son of Blixem. Um, some, I had a son of Topo. Uh, oh, and I had the very best pair was a son of, from Cassart. Uh, I had purchased birds from Cassart, from the first national winner, and his two brothers. From those 11 pigeons, there was an exceptional cock that I made it to a Figo daughter. And in 04, they, one of them won uh, the truck race by Rick Martis, and a sister won the Flamingo, which at that point paid 20000 just like the Martis race. So I bought a new car for my wife and a new truck for her. <laughs> Taiwan was very fortunate for me. Um, many years ago, I was contacted by someone from Taiwan to buy Janssen Youngsters. And at the time, I had just weaned my first round. And it was a young man in California. I was a medical student. So I picked out, I think it was 12 youngsters. In fact, my son said, what are we going to do? Fly the second-rate pigeons? That's when I had all the... The direct ones go from the donker steer. <coughs> I sent those 10 or 12 pigeons to Taiwan, never heard anything. And I always thought, well, what happened to those pigeons? Those were really special pigeons. Why have I never heard? Uh, maybe 10, 15 years later, I get a phone call from an interpreter for a Taiwanese person. They had picked up some pedigrees that those pigeons came from. With that, um, developed a relationship between myself and a fellow named Paul Chen. Uh, Paul Chen flew in the largest club in Taiwan, the Chai Club. The total purse back in the 80s was $10 million. Wow. Twice a year. Okay, by invitation only, 4,400 birds, would go into that race. So the first birds he bought from me, I, I had no idea about what kind of money they flew for. The first birds he bought for me after we haggled something on price a little bit, but when I sent the birds, uh, they were very pleased with the birds. And he says, now tell me which ones are the good ones or which ones are the bad ones. I says, what do you mean? I sent you birds that I think are good. Well, I says, you'll, you'll find out. So anyway, uh, I was very fortunate. The first year uh, on this big race, a bird up from, from me placed 36th. Now, 36 doesn't sound like a lot. Not here. How much money was well, it? Well, let me. It took me several years because they don't talk money. They have never bragged about how much money they make. Yeah. But when he came to visit me in Wisconsin, by that time we're four or five years into a relationship, talking to him maybe twice a day, um, he tells me, oh, that bird made 330000 or $336,000 that day. On top of that, later on, there was like a re-entry part of the way in, and he told me, which pair should I put the youngsters from? I says, Paul, I'm not handling the birds. You are. You, should, you know, if anybody knows. Anyway, okay, he took my advice, but then when he came over, he confessed. He didn't put the bird on that money. 
they would have made another 300,000. Okay. Then after that, I would get a rating. He told me, now, your birds are now 42% successful. If we get birds 20% successful from anybody, he says, we are very happy and very satisfied. You are now doing 42%. I don't know how they did the rating, <laughs> but that was, you know. So it was kind of fun dealing with those people. I would talk to him maybe twice a week, I mean twice a day. He had a morning job or daytime job and a night job. He was the chairman of the board of the Stock Exchange and chairman of board of Futures Exchange. And I would have to tell him how the soybean crop was doing. I would have to tell him, you know, we got to know each other very well. Um, <clears throat> so every year I would send birds. Now they buy every year. Once they buy and they trust you, they buy every year. Um, eventually he died of cancer. Now, the way they fly, in case you're interested, um, they were all located close to the airport. And they're like in a big tower, like, like an oil rig. First floor, they parked the cars. Second floor, the living quarters for the help. The next floor is where they meet like a couple times a week. It's usually a, a group of people. It's not one. And the pigeons are way up on top. And that's how they compete in Taiwan. Um, Very professional. Very professional. The things they do, uh, like I remember rice, or you know, you 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 get you steam it, for instance. You you seaweed. I mean, they are very. I mean, whatever it takes, because don't forget, you're flying for 10 million one season. Now this year, last year I was very sick, so the nephew now of the guy I used to originally deal with has bought birds for me several times. He contacted me last year and he says, do you have anything from this old hen that I had here? And I says, well, Armin, I have just, I have five altogether in the loft. Well, could you sell me a couple? I was gonna send them to him as a gift at first. And here's the reason for the gift. Um, when this Taiwanese, he wanted to come to visit me last year. And I said, I can't see you, I'm too sick. I can't go through a loft. I'm, I, I was really in bad shape. So he couldn't come to see me. So anyway, he contacted me, he sent me an email. I, I saved it forever. Um, when you're sick, you shouldn't have any other stress. Okay? So if by chance you're short of money, let me know and we will help. Well, I never, who do you get an offer like that from? Of course, I contact back. I says, thanks for the offer, but you know, I'm not poor, I'm not rich, but I'm, I'm okay, not a problem. So following that, he wants to have a couple youngsters from this old hen of mine. At first I thought, okay, I'll, I'll send them as a present. No. I'll charge them, but not a lot of money. So, $600 is what I charge them a bird. Reasonable. Okay, reasonable, but you know, I mean, these were nice birds. Understood. Okay. So I sent them the birds, and I get an email back, and no one's ever said that to me before. And he said, you should ask more money for that quality bird. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what a, what a statement. I have never had anybody make that kind of statement. Our sport in this country grew because of immigrants. Okay. I mean, the immigrants that came from um, Belgium, Germany, that's what drove the sport in this country early on. Uh, when I was young in the 50s, the Belgians were the best pigeon flyers in, in, in this country at that point. Uh, it was, if it wasn't the direct immigrants, it was children of immigrants. Okay, then that shifted, for instance, in the Chicago area, when Chicago started to collapse or go really down in the, oh, let's say 1990s or so, then you had a re, re surge of new immigrants coming in. But it was the immigrants that drove it, not the American youth, not the American culture. It's always been the immigrants. Now, what's driving it here? It's the Spanish influence coming. You know, 
whether it's in, in Cuba or, 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 you know, but it's the Spanish influence right now that's given us the growth here. It's not the growth from within this country. There's no internal growth. It's in, in, we're importing Very people. Little. I mean, we we are holding on now. For instance, my four children mm -hmm. all happen to like pigeons. They grew up with pigeons, and they grew up with pigeons where they were positive. Um, one of the things I used to do when, when my kids were little, when I would go training, one child went with me from little on, only one. That bonding that took place in those days was tremendous. My kids can all handle pigeons. My kids will, you know, they're grown people now. They're 50 years old, okay? They are all four of them in high potent jobs, I mean, big jobs. Uh, pigeons are not part of their life, although they are very, they still call the weekend, Dad, how did it go? Uh, they were part of it. They did all the clocking at my house. They did, they were an integral part. Um, yeah, that's the birds. The one, eight, Taiwan. five. Well, Taiwan everybody, 8,400 birds. 8,400 birds. In the old days, they used to have 4,400, but they had 10 million. Now we're flying against 8,400 birds. And this guy last year, he was 32nd. He was, I think, 40th, no, 40 something, 40, early 40s, hmm. and 52nd. Three birds in the top. And they were all bred from the pigeons he got the year before. Wow. I mean, one of the parents was always, not Only all. Only one, 129. Yeah. Wow. Well, really, and at the end, there were 100, yeah, 199 still qualified. We're still, then they shut the races down. And then, yeah. I really appreciate your time. Thank okay. you so much. All right. It's been a pleasure to meet you. You're welcome. Thank you so much.